Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 22, and Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for another day and another word. Lord God, thank you for upholding us in between times, Lord God. You are a mighty God to serve, and we are glad to be your children. We are glad to be a part of your kingdom. Thank you for upholding us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. All right, and so this is actually talking about the thousand year reign um and in a time of triumph for the people who are um no longer in a great distress right it talks about in chapter 12 the earlier verses um saying that though god was angry at them at one time now he's turned away from his anger and he's comforting them and so they are in a state of of thankfulness of gratefulness and they are singing praises to God. And so it says, shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. And so um, these are the ones who will be in the new Mount Zion. It says, for great in the midst is the whole, in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. We know that those that come out of the tribulation are going to be in the presence of God, right? They're going to be serving him all the days of their lives, all the all the days of eternity. And so um, that is this uh, part of the scriptures, a reflection of that thousand year reign. All right. And so um, the second verse is Lamentations chapter two, verse 22. You summon as if to a festal day, my terrors on every side. And on the day of the avenger of the Lord, no one escaped or survived. Those whom I held and raised my enemy destroyed. All right. And so this is actually speaking of Babylon coming in and destroying Jerusalem. Right. And so they are, are in a state of deep distress. They are in a state of, of deep woe. Right. Because all of the beauty of their country is gone away. All of the beauty and the good things, um, all of the young people have been lost. And so every potential for future hope in their eyes has been dashed. And so um, they had trusted in the horses and chariots. They trusted in Egypt. They trusted in every god right but they had not put their hope and their trust in god and so god is you know now summoning them and they think that they're the things that they put their trust in are going to be celebrated um it says you summon as if to a festal day so thinking that they're going to party right they're going to be eating drinking marrying giving in marriage they're going to be having a good time but it says my terror my terrors on every side. And so we know that the people who will be left behind in the tribulation, it will be a, 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 a thought of that they're going to have peace and safety, right? But instead, there's going to be great terror. And so um, it says on the day of the anger of the Lord. And so that is a, a great um, and, and terrible day, right? The great and terrible day is is the day um, that Armageddon happens, and and also, um, as well as during the entire wrath of the of the tribulation being poured out, those are times of terror. Those are times of distress. Of course, the great and terrible day. The the main mention is the one of Armageddon. But it says here, and no one escaped or survived. Wow. And so remember on the great terrible day, when God um, um, breathes out, he's going to take out all of the enemy, 
right? He's going to take out all the confidences of man. He's going to knock down the walls of man, right? And he's going to cause that whole army that has summoned itself against them, against God um, to be completely wiped out and none are going to survive, right? And so God um, wants to have people um, who have cleansed their garments to come out of that, right? That is d- during their time of triumph. Yes, they may be martyred by the enemy, but they, they will come out and and have drink from the wells of eternal life right i think it talks about that in um isaiah 12 and so you know they're going to experience um goodness they're going to experience bliss they're going to experience that salvation um but now is is going to be a time of great distress for them as well and so they're going to be coming out of the tribulation they're going to be um surviving through this time some of them martyred most of them martyred through this time and and some of them just killed from the wrath of god and so it says no one escaped or survived those whom i held and raised my enemy destroyed all right and so um um, those who who were cherished um by this person who is lamenting those who um were held as precious uh the enemy destroyed them and so you know that is going to be a a time of great woe amen and so the third verse actually just is such a great um um, touch from God because it, it shows his understanding. It shows his compassion. It shows his desire for us to be in his will. It is Hebrews chapter 14, four, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. All right. And so this is speaking of God. Um, um, this is speaking of how we now should draw near to the throne of grace, right? We need to go to him now while there's still hope. We need to seek his face while there's still a chance. We don't want to be as those who are summoned to the festal day, right? We don't want to be as those who have to go down to the dust. We would prefer to do it now, right? We would prefer to humble ourselves now, drawing near to the throne of grace now while we can receive that mercy because we have sinned right we have all sinned and come short of the glory of god and we can go to that throne now and and receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need right um he is offering and extending this scepter he is offering and extending this branch of peace to us right he desires for us to to you know, be able to come to him and and live in his will, but there will be many people who will refuse, right? There will be many people who will um go and and continue on in their way and they're gonna have to face this summoning of the festal day, right? The thought that they are okay and everything is gonna be okay, right? And because of that, they are going to have to be a part of those who overcome by washing their garments in the blood of the lamb, right? And and that is not the way God wants for them. But if that's the only way for them to receive salvation is coming through the test, then then so be it god is going to do what he has to do right to get as many people to himself as he can and and we pray that you know many people choose god over this world amen choose god over temporary gain or temporary satisfaction um of being on the enemy side and and then in the end falling with him amen all right you guys let's pray Thank you, Father God, for a future hope, Lord God, even for those who will be in tribulation, a future hope of singing and shouting for joy and and ushering um, you in as the king, Lord God, even as people who have come out of the tribulation, Lord God. I pray for these people. I pray for their hearts and their minds. I pray that they come to you now, as many people come to you now as possible. But if they have to come to you then, then so be it, Lord God. We ask you, Jesus, to just work on their hearts and help them to do your will, Lord God. Help them to not have to come 
to this festal day um, that is being presented and and end up having terror on every side. Lord God, we know that that's not your desire for them. You want them to be spared these things, but Lord God, people make choices and, and you are a still a good God, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.